Hi, my name is Zizrin, and today we are going to read over the, um... Wait, how's the volume for you guys? Is it good? Okay, sweet. Hi, my name is Zizrin, and today we are going to look over the Delirium Patch Notes. I'm still in the new house, so audio is a bit scuffed, and I don't have alerts if I miss a resub. That's my bad, and uh, lost thing for the four months. <coughs> and I just woke up. I'm tired. But we're gonna read through them. Um, right, normal challenge the intro thing. And they, the, the rewards, they changed the rewards slightly for those of you who haven't seen that. The, um, uh, the wings look better now. Hey, thank you for the 19 months resub, dude. All right, let's see. That's all the new gems added. Let's read the, the stuff that's not the same every single patch. Why two back attachment rewards? Yeah, I thought that was a bit weird too. I was hoping for the portal. But I'm guessing that's going to be like 50 bucks. All right. Made significant improvements to spectre monsters. Many monsters that couldn't be spectres previously now can. So there's like, was it 100 or 200 new spectres, which is pretty cool. This includes things like Abyss Monsters and um, Conqueror Mobs and stuff like that. Hee hee, thank you for the sub. What's that? I'm just gonna ask. Wait. <clears throat> a stash Jainiris Menagerie. Oh, and increase the appearance of shocked, burning, costly, and chill the ground. Wonder if that's made specifically for the uh the new fog. Vortex, thank you for the six months, dude. Uh new 3D art for the Rotting Legion, nine new Grandmasters. Arctic Breath, Caustic Arrow, Frost Blades, Ice Nova, Molten Shell, Molten Strike, and Scorching Ray have had visual upgrades. That's good. Race zombies, nice animations we created for PoE 2. Remember 2.0 burning ground? I do. Let's see. Oh, sweet. My girlfriend's getting me them sip. Cremation's projectile impact area of effect is now more clearly portrayed visually. We can once again sell three sextants of the same tier to a vendor for a sextant one tier higher. Dude, imagine if we could remove maps. <coughs> Are you okay? You know, my throat's fucked. My girlfriend's throat's been fucked for like three days, but she's better already. <clears throat> uh, you can once again sell three sextants of the same tier. Oh yeah, sorry. Add in an option to have your portal appearance randomly selected from all owned microtransactions. This applies not only to your own portal, but to your map device. That's so good. I love that. It's a standard cold? Nah, it's not even a cold. Just my throat's fucked. Out of the capacity to raise hundreds of new monsters and the content such as Breach. <coughs> How's the move going? Well, the house is pretty empty, but we got most of my stuff moved over. Also, just in case there's someone that's unironically saying I should go to the doctor, even if I had corona, that would be the dumbest thing because then I'd infect other people on the way there. I haven't gone outside, so I'll just stay inside. Even doctors still not advised to go to the doctor? I know, chest retarded. <clears throat> Besides, I have no symptoms except a cough and a dry throat. You can't do a 30 hour stream with Corona? Dude, watch me. Also, I don't have Corona. I have a cough. It's 
same chat that tells you to sleep all day. I know. Like, literally, I'm going to start permabanning anyone telling me to go see a doctor. It's like the dumbest advice I've seen. Actually tilted. <laughs> Maybe it's a tumor. That, however, is good advice. Do they have test kids tits though where you live? I don't go outside. I'm in good health. Why the fuck would I I just I'll just stay here for two weeks and not go anywhere. I also have a throat cough. Demon, thank you for the 14 months. Lawless, thank you for the 10 months. I'm already self-isolated. I also have enough food to not go outside for a month. Okay. Love you. This is your fault. At least you're better already. Everyone's terrified we have corona. I actually have to go to the doctor. Yeah. Yeah, Chet's saying we should go to the doctor. No, Chet's retarded. Just... Yeah, I know. Mm. Love you. Yeah. So your girlfriend goes out though? Nope. We're just staying in the house and building things. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, it's contagious through the internet. So if, if I had Corona and you're watching right now, you probably have it too. But you don't believe in vaccinations either. I'm not retarded. We just went over that. I said chat's retarded, not me. Like, every time somebody doesn't believe in vaccines in my chat, I permaban them. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna try ignoring chat, because it's just dumb comments repeatedly. If somebody subs or anything, just thank them for me, because I'm gonna try not reading chat. That's true, we got. Here. Added a background frame rate cap option. This will limit the frame rate of Path of Excel when it is not the current focus. That's good. The unique synthesis maps and unique washstones now have slots in the unique dash tab. You will no longer be ambushed by betrayal interventions or by Atlas influence. Actually, just back to that line. You know, I think I kind of prefer having one tab with my special maps that I actually care about running. You know? Yeah, I know Spartan, it's crazy. Like, I kind of prefer having one uh, small tab with just like light maps and stuff. Of giving them ideas. No, no, I'm not talking about a special tab. I'm talking about a literally just a normal tab. Like, I feel like the map tab is, like, great for normal maps, but even unique maps I put in there, I, like, end up not doing. Um... Right. You will no longer be ambushed by betrayal interventions or by Atlas influence sponsors while looking at your betrayal board, the incursion temple panel, the metamorph panel, the anointment panel, or talking to an NPC. Can I just hold it down and clear the entire map? To avoid them? Thanks, Nichols. Um, 
Improved engine multi-threading and added support for 16 logical cores previously 8, meaning that PeeWee can better utilize high-end CPUs now. Nice! I just got a new PC, so that's bonkers good for me. Charged, enriched, and pure breach tones now have their each or unique art. That's awesome! Added a new item filter drop, effect color options. Wait, new item filter drop effect color options. Oh. Added an arrow shatter effect for arrows that neither bounce off a surface nor stick. Improve the audio of all war cries. Improve the performance of all ailments, effects on players and monsters. Continue to incrementally improve the sound, art, effect, and environment. I wonder if there's many games that has improved so much. Yeah, yeah, that's different threads. I wonder if there's any game that's improved so much over time as PoE. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there is. I'm just like, I, I was just genuinely curious. Like, it's just changed so much from 2013. Planet side, Warframe. Yeah, World of Warcraft, you're right. But you hate it. Wait, I don't hate Warframe. I really like Warframe. It's like easily one of my like top 15 favorite games. I think Warframe's really good. I just always argue that it's still pay to win. Or at least, you know, you can pay for an advantage in the game. But it's still, like, very little. Very similar to Pee-Wee. Atlas changes. Since launching Conquerors of the Atlas, we've received a lot of great feedback about how the new Atlas of Worlds can be improved. Like letting us remove maps. Let's see what they have to say. Conqueror's presence and their influence mechanics are now spawned deterministically with progress between each influence map tracked on the atlas itself. You can see this on the left side of the atlas panel, connected to the watchstone inventory. Also, Chuck, can you help me out? Um, I want to try to just focus on the patch notes and get through. So if anybody subs, can you all like at them and say thank you? Like, I'm, I'm still noticing when people sub, but I want to just plow through this. So if you guys help me and thank people for me, That'd be even better. Thanks. I love you, chat. You're the best. The chance for a conqueror to occupy the Atlas is now 50%. Dude, that's the same as every chance in Path of Exile. It was already 50%. Either it happens or it don't. Comes hard, either it drops or it doesn't. All good, Sovereign. All good. Um, conquerors will now sometimes grant buffs to the map bosses in their region. I swear to God, if that has a seven second cutscene like the old Shaper did, I will lose my shit. I really will. Improvements have been made on how to progress through the Conqueror of the Atlas quest attract. What? Improvements have been made to how. That sentence seems really weird, right? Improvements have been made to how progress through the conquerors. To how progress through? That can't be correct. That cannot be the optimal way to write that. How To how progress through at conquerors of the Atlas. It is? Really? I would have said improvements have been made on how to progress. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it is right. Fuck. It should be significantly easier to see what your next steps are. Well, that's really good. I like that. You can now clearly see what watchstones have sections applied to them when they're in the watchstone inventory. Added a short watchstone tutorial, which takes you through how to use and store your watchstones. The awakening level of your atlas is now the number of watchstones you have socketed, divided by four, rounded down. In other words, you will gain awakening levels gradually, rather than only when you build a watchstone altar. If you fail to defeat a conqueror, you will no longer get additional monster packs or influenced items from their influenced region until you can defeat them. That's really good. Because that was so exploitable and I like... I hate having to do stuff like that for like SSF level 100. Um... 
Uh, improve the visibility of active Conqueror Citadels on your outlook. Nice. Bonus for completing the Atlas objectives and the bonus for awakening. You will no longer gain additional chance for maps to drop one tier higher from awakening bonus. The base chance to gain an Atlas mission upon map completion is now 35% from 40. Um, you will gain 1% chance to gain an Atlas mission upon completion per 15 maps with the awakening bonus. You will now gain 1% Map mod effect per six maps with the awakening bonus objective. We made changes to several sets of modifiers that were overly rewarding. The unidied map modifier now runs 20, 25, or 30 instead of 25, 30, 35, and 9, 12, 15 pack size from 12, 15, 18. Yeah, that one was OP. Wait, oh, I did just skip serious. I don't know how that happened. Sorry, I don't know how I did that. I'll blame it on having just woken up. Sirius's apparition is now more active during the arena phases. Sirius now heals for 75% of his maximum life at the start of his final phase at the Awakening level 8 from 50%. Oh. Huh. Sirius now teleports away from the player before using his corridor skill. He takes 80% less damage during the corridor skill, and the projectiles he fires now pierce all non player targets. Wow, that's actually a really big nerf for summoners. The rotating quad beam ability now has larger beams and applies a debuff which reduces your action speed and causes you to take increased damage. That's awesome! That seems like really, really good changes for the fight. That's really good. I like that. Sorry, now we can go back to the this one. Um, the Sexton modifiers have got additional packs and increase the damage you take now to do 4, 6, or 8 instead of 6, 8, and 10. I mean, Sextons were too strong anyway, so I guess that's good. And barrels are down by 5. Metamorph mechanic added to the core game. Metamorph and Tain can now be found once you reach maps. Each map has a 10% chance to be populated with monsters who can drop metamorph ports. parts. Ports? Tain will appear in your hideout once you've completed his Pound of Flesh quest. He will no longer appear in towns. Misanthropy that he is. Um, you can now find metamorph scarabs from various sources. Each scarab guarantees metamorph monsters will appear in an area. With higher tier scarabs causing math bosses to drop additional metamorph parts. Means that he hates people. Yeah, I mean, he has reason to. Thank you. Thanks. Love you. Um, added a sextant modifier which also causes maps in the associated atlas region to contain metamorph monsters. Made a number of improvements to specific metamorph behavior situations. For example, metamorph with only ranged skills will now attempt to move closer to the player, whereas previously they would stand in place. The maximum power effect on a bar to the right of the metamorph panel no longer plays if it's impossible for the fight to drop an itemized organ. And added a line to the reward box when the metamorph will drop an itemized organ. You know, I really, I was kind of hoping there was a small child inside of me hoping, not act, not literally, um, that I was hoping that um, the Tain's lab, when it was full, now that I would like do something. You know, that would be nice. That's what I want. Like, there's, I feel like it's unfinished. <laughs> yes, Twitch, the stream right here. Um. My throat's fine already, so that's good. Lemsip helped. Um, obviously, the room's still echoey, but that's getting fixed today? Later today? You mean like a lot of other leagues? Yeah, it does feel very unfinished, doesn't it? Endgame Vol side area improvements. 
Vile side areas found in maps and those created by placing individual vile fragments. Oh, and, and, wow, I didn't think they were going to do that. Now count as a map area for the purposes of map drops and other mechanics which interact with the map areas. I am going to run so many vile side areas early. This is going to make it, wow, that's actually huge. So they've... For those of you who don't know, right? They're, they've buffed Vile side areas. And it's probably going to have an even higher chance to drop a 6 sink than before. And it was already pretty high before. So now it might be worth early on to actually like, throw the sack fragments into the map device and run them. They are now generated as rare maps, meaning they will always have 4 to 6 modifiers on their area. Vile side areas open via placing an individual fragment is now one level higher across the board. The values on the area modifiers are now similar to those found on maps of a similar level. Wait until you see the Cicerone specific buff. Awesome. Um, added many new mods that can appear on Vile side areas, including several that can influence the items and rewards found in those areas. Ellie and Fist Damage Reflection modifiers can no longer appear for these areas and increase the number of monsters found in an all map level of outside area. Nice. Monsters normally found in incursion encounters will now be found in Val side areas. Oh. Side area bosses now have life pools similar to other unique monsters found in maps. Cool. This was huge. Elemental and physical damage modifiers can no longer appear. So like the, the, the areas just do a lot less damage now. Elemental and physical damage modifiers can no longer appear for these areas. <sighs> mods? Why do you need mods, Wilbatron? Not damage modifiers, damage. That's what I said. I was hoping for that joke, thank you. Modifiers. Still can't see the Peppa hands. Yeah, I don't have BTTV. It's a good joke, thank you. Somebody can clue in chat. Um. <laughs> Character balance. Modifiers to melee weapons and unarmed attack range are now described as X to melee strike range. The functionality hasn't changed, but weapons that describe their range still refer to weapon range. Increases and reductions to reflect... Fuck. Increases and reductions to reflected damage, such as Sexton, Modifier, or Yugle's Godfire, now also affect your minions. Wow. That's a really, really good thing for minions going forward. <clears throat> Wand attack projectiles are now considered larger for the purpose of collision detection against monsters. Um, elusive, 30% movement speed instead of 40. 15 dodge from 20 and 50. I don't feel like the dodge needed to be nerfed. I feel like maybe the movement speed was just too much, but maybe. He doesn't know. Well, I'm assuming minions are nerfed. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm assuming minions are nerfed, especially from all the Peppa Loves. But that's still a good change for minions, because, you know, even if something gets nerfed now, it's not nerfed forever. There's a hard upper limit for 75% chance to avoid damage from hits, such as the fire damage avoidance found on Glitter Disc. Scorch and Brittle uh, have, both, have had both their maximum effects raised. I'm going to give you my maximum effect raised. Scorch reduces alley damage by a maximum of 30 from 20. That's really big for um, Ellie here. With the new thing, but I can't remember what's called. Brittle now increases the chance to critically strike an afflicted enemy by up to 15% from 10. Nice. Skill rework now has the physical tag. Now animates a weapon in an area around where you're targeting. You don't have to target a specific item. Animate weapon has been reworked and undergone cosmetic upgrades. 
The damage multiplier on anime weapon was not applying to the minion's damage at all. Meh. But it was, I had like 19 million damage with my build before. Is it a negative multiplier and it's supposed to do less damage? Chris Wilson. Is it supposed to do less damage and it was doing too much or is it actually supposed to do more damage? Now it will do more? Okay. Sure, it needed that. Let's see, I'm, I'm sure they've destroyed it. I'm expecting a nerf. Uh, anime weapon has been reworked and undergone cosmetic upgrades as well. Damage multiplier... Oh, right. Um, can now be supported by Unleash and Spell Echo. Ooh, that could be really cool. Anime weapon Unleash. Now has a base duration of 40 seconds from 37 um, at all gem levels. Now allows a maximum of... Now allows a maximum of... Five?! Oh, no. Five at level one, up to 14 at level 20. Oh, but that's a massive nerf for Chains of Command. What level is Chains of Command? What level is the Chains of Command ones? 18. Oh, okay, I thought it was lower. Has a base cast rate of 0. 0.6, costs 4 mana at time level 1, up to 12 at 20. Now grants minion attacks, 5 to 8 added phys additional physical damage at time level 1, up to 126 to 184 at time level 20. Minions now deal 10% more damage at level 1, um, up to 48 more damage at time level 20. Note that there was previously a similar but numerically higher bonus listed, as it turns out did nothing. Are they sure that this one works? Now grants your minions 10% more attack speed to at terminal 1 up to 48 to terminal 20. I wonder how this is going to be for Chains of Command. Now it gains 2% minimum movement speed per gem quality from 4. Oh, that's a nerf. Anime could still work then. I haven't done the numbers. Has anyone done the numbers? Because I had... But this seems like a massive nerf to the Oros one, right? Although it is the 48% more that actually works now. But it seems like a massive buff to Voidforge ones, right? I just, I haven't done the numbers yet, so I'm just thinking out loud. But this definitely makes Oros shouldn't be the best thing anymore, right? Because before Oros was like a no-brainer. Now it's going to be closer to other things. Like Void Force should be bonkers now. And Paradoxica. Two times Cold Iron Point. Yeah, you're right. Cold Iron Point works for it now. I wonder, they haven't said anything here about what happens at like 21 to 32. Wait for it. I mean, anime could still be really good, but I was hoping anime would be good anyway. Because I don't know what it is, but for me, anime weapon is like the skill, the minion skill that's like always been genuinely fun. Well, I think there is ways, maybe a new enchant or something, but I think there are ways of getting it because they posted a video very recently of 20 anime weapons. And that could be just that they're still reworking it and they hadn't like decided. But I think there will be ways of getting more than 14. Shit, I just got here, start over. Okay. All right, let's go back to the start. So Delirium has been... <laughs> Sorry, dude.
But cool. I'm I'm a hopeful for anime weapons still then. So I think I'm gonna do the math. We did the math. Uh, and then um if it if it looks good, I'm gonna make a fully updated anime weapon guide, including chains of command. I think 21 will be 15. Yeah, I think so too. But yeah, we're working on a lot of videos. I don't want to record too much while it's like all echoey and that gets fixed later today. But it's not too bad, right? It's still like, you can still listen to it. Anyway. Skill balance. All totems and ballistas now have 50% more base life than previously, with the exception of ancestral totems, decoy totems, holy flame totems, which had higher base life already. These totems have received a smaller increase to their base life, and base mine throwing time has been raised to 0.3 seconds from 0.25. Nice, I don't like mines. Other than AW, this isn't passionate, this is an obituary. Obituary. Um, man, I hate, I hate like hot drinks. I like when hot drinks get cold. Um, Ancestral Protector now rises out of its ground, leaving a hole in its wake like a devourer. Arctic Breath. Base projectile speed has been greatly increased. Now has a base time, cast time of 0.6 seconds from 0.7. Now deals 11 to 16 cold damage at gem level 1. Um, 301 to 450. Oh wow, that's quite the reduction. Cost 7 mana at gem level 1, up from 8, or down from 8, and up to 20 from 23. I mean, the projectile speed increase is nice, but this seems like a pretty big nerf for no reason. It's not a nerf, it casts faster. I mean, it lost 70 foot. <laughs> it lost 70 foot base damage. It's definitely a nerf still. To be fair, it makes sense. Arctic Breath was too mad anyway. Like, everybody was playing Arctic Breath. And it was just a bit boring, you know? Artillery Ballista now deals base damage and has an added damage effectiveness of 40% up to 51 at 20, so up by 9%. And thanks for all the subs and stuff. Blade Vortex. Blades created by the skill can now be destroyed with Blade Blast. Blade Fall can now create lingering, lingering blades, and these can be animated with anime weapon or destroyed with blade blast. You know, it would be cool. It would be cool if we could animate from Blade Vortex. That would be nice. Um, Dash now gains 3% increased travel distance per gem level. EK can now create ling 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 lingering blades. These can be animated with anime weapon or destroyed with blade blast. Explosive Arrow now gains plus 2 explosion radius per explosive arrow on the target, up to plus 12 at all gem levels. Huh. Wait, why is this in there? It was 19 before? Where's the skill? Huh. That seems terrible. You can now stick a maximum of 20 explosive arrows to an enemy. Previously, no limit. Wasn't pe weren't people generally struggling with EA as it will? As it was? Explosives. Explosions now deal 3% more damage with hits and ailments. And we're already past the E. So I can safely say that Essence Strain Contagion is probably going to be a good build this thing. Because we're already past the E. I mean, there could be something more later. But we're past the E and the C. So that's good. 
I'll be making a fully updated guide on it too, with like, because there are some things that I feel like I could improve on the last one. So we'll, we will update it a bit. Yeah, it'll be even better. It should be bonkers, this thing. <sighs> Flame Dash. The increased cooldown recovery speed this skill gains as the level's up has been lowered. It now gains up to 47% cooldown recovery speed from 76. Okay. Now it gains 1% cooldown recovery speed per 2 gem quality from 1%. Oh. Damas, thank you for the raid, dude. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, dude. Appreciate that. Hope you enjoyed the patch notes, dude. Um, Flame Blast now has a radius of 2 from 5. Now it gains plus 3 radius per stage from 2. Okay. Flame Blast needed more love, if anything. I feel like they're just, like, it's a lot of surprising weird nerfs that, like, make no sense. It's like, did you really not want people to try these skills? Thanks, that mods. Plus 7 radius buff at 10 stacks? Yeah, but, you know, ideally you want to... No, it's not necessarily a buff, because if you've played Flame Blast, you're generally not casting it at full stack. You're not sitting there and going... Boof! Boof! Generally, the most people that play Flame Blast will be like, boop, 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 boop. Anyway, we'll continue reading. Maybe you should? Maybe. Frostblade now deals damage and leaves Chill Ground at both of its start and end locations. This sounds like a massive buff. Now receives a reduced cooldown reduction based on nearby enemies at both start and end locations. Base maximal travel distance of 42 at gem level 1. Now gains 2% travel distance per gem level and additional radius acid levels. This sounds insane. Like, so I always feel like when I'm leveling, I always feel like I want to keep using Frost Blink a little better. Like I normally, I'm not that a big fan of switching to Flame Rush at level 12. But at the moment, I'll probably keep Flame Rush, sorry, Frost Blink to like 15 to 20, maybe even 25. Because it's so nice for clearing early when you still don't like, especially if you're using Frost Bomb, right? It's sad that second wind doesn't work on it. Herald of Agony. Agony Crawler now deals 5% increased physical damage per virulence from 6%. Up to 9% of gem level 20 from 12. Wow, they nerfed it by 3%? They've nerfed... They've changed Flame Blast, in my opinion, in a bad way. They've nerfed Arctic Breath and Explosive Arrow. But Herald of Agony gets a 3% per stack. It's it's way it, like it I don't think you understand how bonkers Herald of Agony is. Oh you're right, it gets 50. I was thinking it got 10. But that's still like it's just such a stupid skill. It does so much damage with no investment. All my Herald of Agony builds, I've had one damage node. This is horrible at math. I am actually horrible at math. I also can't read. I'm salty about explosive error. Yeah. You have a new nodes with plus five virulence anyway, and that'll give a lot of flat. True. This guy's serious? Yeah. Why wouldn't I be so pal? Have you played Herald of Agony? Skellies were the problem. Yeah, skeletons is a bigger problem than Herald of Agony, but every Herald of Agony build I've done like one damage node, and it's insane damage. Now you need two damage nodes? Yeah, pretty much. If Agony is already strong, what happens if you push more into it? Well, normally we just do tanky characters with it. Because you normally you just do it on like a Juggernaut or a Guardian, and you just tank up, and then you're immortal. Like every time I've done a character with it, they've never died. Like, and, and there's so many new nodes and there's the, um, no, it's still, it's still bonkers. Like, it needed a way bigger nerf. I don't know what you guys are talking about and calling me crazy. They, they added that, like, the new minion node for one, for one herald. Lol, nobody thanking subs anymore. No, I said earlier, I'm not thanking subs or reading alerts during the stream because I'm reading patch notes, Franco. That's why I asked chat if chat can thank all the subs. Oh, no one from chat is helping. God damn it, chat. 
If it was the nerf room flat, it would be big. Yeah. Yeah, no, I I think this is a very, very small nerf for Herald of Agony. Very, very small nerf. Compared to what it needs. I mean, like, Herald of Agony is something I really wouldn't mind seeing dumpstered for a few leagues. Just to, like, rotate it out. Hundred and thirty-five percent decrease is substantial. It would be if it wasn't getting such a massive damage buff. Like just the Herald node they put in is insane. Hundred and fifty percent decrease is not big on this. They've like buffed it so much in so many other ways. There's so many new nodes and like the the, the insane Herald Keystone. Yeah, but it's per sex, so that's a lot of nerf from 45 sex. It's not! It really isn't. What's the Herald Keystone? I can't remember, but it's bonkers. It's like, shit tons more damage. As long as you're only using one Herald. Lone Messenger, that's what it's called. But no Auras? It's fine. You can just do Zibakwa anyway. You can just use Zibakwa for tanking. Just go cold, dual cold iron point in your set. Yeah, like, Herald of Agni is still going to be insane this league. Definitely a skill I would love to see fully dumpstered. Lightning Warp has a base cast time of 0.7 from 0.8. 30% reduced duration at gem level 1 from 20. To 49, so 10% buff. That's nice. I hope we see a lot of lightning warp. I just think it's a skill that looks so cool. Precision. Now we have 20% crit strike chance to you and everybody. Else. Oh no. I mean, deserved, but oh no. It was too OP at level 1. And it's not nerfed at level 20. I mean, it's still worth it. It's like 12 mana for 20 crit chance. Yeah, I mean, Herald of Agony is going to be better in this patch than in the last one. Including the nerf. That was my problem. Um, now fires an additional projectile for every 4 prior mines in the detonation sequence. Previously fired an additional projectile per two mine detonations. Nice. Okay, cool. Base cast time of 0.18 seconds from 25. Ray Spectres are now level 31 at gem level 1, up to 76 at gem level 20. Previously level 80 at level 20. Oh, nice. That's a good nerf. Um, Ray Zombie. The number of maximum Ray Zombies you can have at gem level 20 is now 6 from 7. Zombie behavior while idle and near the player is now less chaotic. I can't wait to see what they've done to Skellies. I hope they're just removed. Remove them. Shield Charge. The radius of the damaging circle at the end of the charge has been doubled. The effects have been updated to match. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice. That should be really good for like curse and hit stuff. And anything related to that. Shrapnel Ballista now deals base damage and has an added damage effectiveness of 38 at gem level 1 from 33 to 44 at gem level 20. Spirit Offering. Repeated rapid casting of Spirit Offering was far too efficient as a means of protecting and recovering minion life and player life through Mistress of Sacrifice. This still provides valuable protection for minions without it being significantly better than almost every tool available. No longer grants a portion of the minion's maximum life as energy shield. Now grants 20% chaos resistance at gem level 1 up to 30 at gem level 30 at 20. Nice. Right. Well, spirit offering's gone. That's good. Steel can't do his build anymore. Nice. I'm very happy about this.
Steel Mage is crying. It's still pretty good. I wouldn't use it over Bone Offering. Summon Carrying Golem. Now causes your Carrying Golems to deal 5% more damage per non Golem mini near them from 8%, up to a maximum of 50 from 80. Okay. Summon Holy Relic. Now displace the minion's life in the tooltip. Now has a cooldown of 0.3 seconds from 0.25. Summon Skeletons. Damage dealt by minions at all gem level has been lowered by approximately 40%. This change is invisible on the gem as it's a property of the minion itself and does not affect skeletal mages or any other non-basic skeleton minion. Minions summoned by the Val Summon Skeletons. The number of max skeletons is now 7 from 8. So what's that? That's a total damage nerf of 65? I don't know how to math. That still doesn't seem like enough, but... Hopefully it will be. Zombies still OP? Well, I don't feel like Zombies was that OP anyway. It wasn't... Zombie, like, okay, so Skeletons actively made me feel like I needed to play them in several reasons. Zombies never did. I also hate playing Zombies. Pogue will still be, like, a go-to boss killer, though. 52.5% of my math is right. 47.5. Well, in that vicinity, anyway. Right, Temp Chains, now is 50% less effect against players. Previously had 40% reduced effect against players. Note that this change means it's multiplicative with sources of increased curse effect. They nerfed Headhunter? That's so cool! That's massive! Wait, how long does Headhunter last now? That's huge. Can we only get like 50 second Headhunter? You need a 175% increased curse effect to get old values? Wow. Awesome, Tabaxi. That's really good. Volatile Dead. Now displays that you are limited to a maximum of 60 orbs at a time. Vol Skill Balance. Vol Flame Blast now triggers every three stages from every five. Wow. That's huge. Now as a base rate is the 35 from 30. No, it's not. What do you mean? Headhunter should be nerfed even more. Well, okay, no. Okay, so if I had free reign over what to do over Headhunter, I would buff it. Because it's currently 20 seconds, right? I would give it an additional 10 seconds, but not let it be scaled at all by self-cursing or solstice or anything. It should it should never last more than its base duration. There should never be a way to make it last longer. And then it would be fine. I think that's like most people's solution. That is like the best one. And then you don't need to remove the item. All poor people in chat hate Headhunter. I mean, yeah, I've only had 13 or 14. Have I had 14? 13 or 14. But, but I'm just hating on it because I'm poor. I mean, Headhunter would still be good with that. It just wouldn't be... Only rich people want it nerfed? Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm definitely in the minority of people that can afford one that want it nerfed. Anyway, let's continue. Um, oh, was that the only Val skill balance? Wow. Support gem balance. Ballista Totem now causes supported skills to deal 42% less damage at gem level 1 from 50% and up to 33% less damage at gem level 20 from 41. Huh. Wait, Val Monshell really wasn't nerfed? I'm like, I'm not over this. Hold on.
Yeah, this will be on YouTube. Yeah, I'm very, very surprised while Molten Shell's not in here. But that's good for me as a hardcore player, so I'm happy with that. It's going to be interesting to see what they did to Impale. Um, support gem balance, Ballista Totem support now causes uh, supported skills to deal 42% less damage. Actually, I can do this. Uh, at level 1, from 50% and up to 33% less damage at gem level 20. From 41. Nice. Feeding Frenzy support now gives minions from supported skills a 25% chance to ground Feeding Frenzy up to 44 at level 20. Oh, that's nice. No longer causes minions from supported skills to deal more damage while you have Feeding Frenzy. Huh, interesting. Okay. Well, that sucks. Unleash support now causes spells to deal 20% less damage when reoccurring at gem level 1 and up to 11% at level 20. Wow, that's huge. I already liked Unleash. That's massive. Unleash was already super strong. I mean, to be fair, like, my main usage of it was Summon Raging Spirits. Wait, Summon Raging Spirits hasn't been nerfed, so my SRS build is still really good then. That's awesome. And it probably gets buffed quite a lot by all the new nodes. So that's nice. And that, that was a pretty balanced build anyway. And also fun to play. Um, Awaken on Niche now causes spells to deal 10% less damage when reoccurring at gem level 1. Up to 8%. Wow. Okay. Wow. Massive buff. Wow. Awaken on Niche support is going to be really uh, expensive. Not as expensive as Awaken Spell Cascade, but still. Um, passive Skill Tree Balance. The second passive on the Energy Shield path from the Witch's starting location now grants plus 15 maximum Energy Shield from 10, and the first and last passives of the Energy Shield path immediately following that now each grant 3% ES in addition to the 10% ES. Oh, that's a nice change. It's not useless anymore. We, it's not better to pass through the Int now. They still should have changed it a bit more, but at least it's like, you know, normally we would just leave through the uh, the inn. The one slinger cluster north of which has been reworked. It now guns 25% damage while wielding a wand, 5% attack speed with wands, and causes increases and reductions of spell damage to apply to wand attacks. The passive proceeding it grants a total of 24% increased damage while wielding a wand, and 4% attack speed with wands. Nice. Enigmatic Reach now grants 10% attack speed with staves from 8% and 10% cast speed from 8% and 8% more AoE on the small passive. Explosive Impact north of Templar now grants 30% increased fire damage. Very few passive street changes. Um, yeah, 30% fire instead of 25 and 12% AoE instead of 8 and 10% strength and in. Nice. The small passive runs 8% fire damage from 6% and 8% AoE. 12% fire damage instead of 10. Searing Heat is moved slightly but still connected to the same passive. And Arcane Expanse is moved south and is just north of Arcane Vision. Except the 280 new notables. Yeah, yeah, but I'm talking about the existing stuff. I was still expecting there to be... I don't know. I wasn't expecting a lot, but this is very little. But I don't, I don't mind. Ascendancy Balance, Necromancer, Bone Barrier no longer grants elemental resistance per minion. Increases in life, increased life and energy shield recovery per minion is now 2% from 3, capping at a 20 from 30. Commander of Darkness now grants you and your nearby allies 30% all rest from 20. Pog Necros buffed! Pog! <laughs> I pay that off. 
Assassin! Opportunistic. Now grants 25% more damage when there is uh, at most one rare or unique enemy nearby from 20%. Ambush and assassinate. Now grants 25% more damage with hits and ailments against enemies that are only alive from 20%. And Mistwalker is now nerfed by 5% attacking cast speed. Cool. I'm thinking assassin as my starter. No, Necro's fine. Guardian, Radiant Faith now grants maximum energy shield equal to 10% of your reserved from 15. Ooh, wow. Wow. I still want to nerf more. They should have put it to like zero. Just remove the node. Remove the node 2020. But still, that's a big nerf. That's a big nerf. There is more? I hate it. Remove it 2020. There is more, and that's awesome. I'm glad to hear it. Um, physical damage taken as cold, sorry, chaos, fire, cold, and lightning are now mutually exclusive. So that just means you can't have two on the same item, right? Curse and hit modifiers. Yeah, okay, sweet. Just making sure. Curse and hit modifiers found on rings are now mutually exclusive. This does not include ones obtained via item corruption. Oh, cool. I just thought that was a bit crazy anyway. Having rings with like multiple curse on hits. Corrupting duels can now have enemies have minus 2% fist damage reduction against your hits as an implicit. Oh, that's kind of a nerf. It's going to be harder to get corrupting blood duels. And I would definitely not want this for, like, any of my builds that I'm going to play. That's kind of a nerf. Corrupted implicits on belts, which increase two different attributes, are now mutually exclusive. Oh. That's kind of sad. The Enduring Modifier on Mana Flasks now has 30% reduced duration from 25 and 30% reduced amount... A flask with this modifier no longer queued while a stronger effect is active. Instead, the duration will continue to expire with no effect until a stronger flask ends or enduring oh. I mean, it's still good enough though. It still fixes any mana issues early. Right? It's still really good. Just can't be like... Abused as much. Um, bows can now roll a high level suffix, which caused them to fire two additional arrows. The existing splintering mod can now appear on lower level mods and is more common. Wow. That is a huge buff to bows. They maybe should have done that for bow league. And not in one league. The Oftaktadi modifier can now appear only on body armors. It now reduces damage taken over time by 5 to 7% from 8 to 10. And if you use a divine or ever, the item will update to these new values. Yay, nerf. The Taktati modifier now has 3 to 5% fist damage as extra chaos. And you can divine your old weapons if you want to lower the damage you deal for some reason. Nice. The Tapatantis modifier, elemental, modifier's elemental resistance penetration now only applies to attacks. And now penetrates 5 to 7% of your enemy's resistance from 13 to 15%. Existing items are affected to the penetration type change. And using a divine orb will bring items, will bring existing items to these new values. Hmm. Taktari? Taktaris? Oh yeah, I guess it's Taktaris. Also, I wonder if there's going to be any long-term psychological effects of me being in a green room with an echo for a long time. I feel already cranky by the echo because it's worse for me. <laughs> and the entire room's green. Um, Bum's arriving today. Your face is green too? Yeah, I'm gonna get better lighting. Maybe you'll go delirious? Good one. Really, really good one. Um, 
Right. Guatzlitzi's gu, 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 jewelry modifier now runs 2% max life from 3 to 5. Oh, F? The energy shield version is now around 3% max energy shield from 8 to 10. F? I mean, they're still strong, but now they're not something I'm going to like actively farm for as much. Um, the Zopex modifier can no longer appear on boots, gloves, or helmet. The amulet version now grants increased max mana rather than flat mana regen. Wasn't the flat mana regen pretty insane for a lot of builds that scaled it? I mean, I liked it. Like, flat mana is, like, pretty decent. You get scaled so hard when you actually have a mana build. Um, the Af Puharte modifier now runs 3 to 5 fist damage, taken as Ellie. Yeah, it's bigger early game for sure. This is better end game, I guess. Uh, divine it if you'd rather be taking more physical damage. Nice. Of Sida Quotal, one handed weapon modifiers, it's 50 to 66% damage modifier by Armenian from 70 to 74, and two handers are 85 to 94 instead of up to 110. You can, I love these like these like weird notes. You can use the divine herb on existing weapons if you're sick of how strong your minion build is. You know, maybe I am GDD. Maybe I am. The frost blink travel the frost blink travel distance labyrinth helmet and shell now grants fifty percent travel distance from the merc lab from sixty five and seventy five percent travel distance from hundred. This does not affect existing items. You can no longer obtain the plus two projectiles fire class mine helmet. The plus one marine now exclusively comes from Eternal Lab. Okay, nice. Hmm. Crafted modifiers. The veiled modifier that grants you plus one to maximum number of skellies can only be unveiled or crafted on the helmet slot. It can no longer be unveiled and crafted on body armors. Mm. Nice. Influence item modifiers. New mods are available. Hunter and Warlord gloves. Another tier of max resistance modifiers are now available on boots, gloves, helmet, and shields. Quiver can well roll the second tier of these modifiers. The Conqueror Exalted Orbs will now correctly obey the mod restrictions of daggers and war staves. Shaper influence helmets can now gain nearby enemies to increase elemental damage. Do you think that stacks? Nothing they said earlier about like... Do you think it stacks with fossils? They didn't say anything earlier about it not being exclusive. Keep reading, he doesn't know. Uh oh. Pepe laugh. Elder influence quivers can no longer gain. Chance to gain a frenzy charge on kill. Warlord's spells at increased damage are higher value... Oh, slightly higher value than veiled items. Shaper influence belts can no longer grant increased energy shield. Increased fire, cold, and lightning damage modifiers on belts from Warlord Redeemer can now 5% higher than previous. Oh, I see. Fossil crafting. Hunter influence amulets can now grant chaos damage leech to fly. Fossil crafting. We want crafting to be a great way to uh, a, a way to get great items, but not the only way to get the very best items. Fossil crafting, in particular, was the only way to obtain a large number of very desirable mods. We've done away with all fossil exclusive mods except those found on faceted, bloodstained, and hollow fossil, and moved them to a number of other sources. These mods can still be obtained obtained through fossil crafting as long as the base item also fulfills the mod's requirement. I kind of like this. I actually kind of like it because they were sort of too strong. Like, for example, like, remember when the life, when Pristine had, like, the exclusive life one? I felt like it was so pointless, like, doing any sort of other crafting. Because I felt like, oh, I have to use Pristine fossils. And then they ended up being stupidly expensive. Like, it's going to be a bit rough to me as an SSF player. But since they've moved them, assuming we haven't lost any mods entirely and that they're just on like shaped and other items now. 
Like, if they remove them entirely, that would be really bad. But uh, they said they've just moved them. So... Because, like, fossils are still really good. Same with essences. They're, they're both great ways of crafting. Fossils can no longer craft any prefixes or suffixes that cannot be obtained elsewhere, with the exception of those granted by facet blah 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 blah. Implicit modifiers, such as the ones obtained which changes an item's vendor sell price remain, and the following mods have been relocated while all others can no longer be obtained. Oh no. On boots, plus two socketed fire gems. Um plus two level of socketed coal gems. Uh wait, did we lose Glyphic? Uh, plus two level of socketed lightning gems, plus two level of socketed chaos gems, now from Hunter Influence. Plus one global level of race specters, now from Elder Influence. Wow. What did Glyphic do? Um, Glyphic did any of the horror, horror, delirium, like the special essence. Any of those essences. Hey, Shidar. Well, that sucks. Uh, on helmet, nearby enemies. Oh, so they are on other things. So Shaper's just better then. So, Fire on Warlord, Cold on Redeemer. I mean, they all make sense. Uh, okay. I mean, they, I mean, at least we still have them. Increased effect, Fortify effect is for Seder Influence. Uh, socketed attacks of minus 15 mana cost is now from Warlord on chest. And aura effect now for redeemer. Quiver, frenzy charge is now an elder influence. I thought that would be hunter, but that makes sense, I guess. Chaos damage from hunter influence. Physical damage from elder influence. Ellie damage from shaper influence. Energy shield from body armor now on shaper influence. And a prefix. Oh. Okay. Well, that sucks. Actually, no, that's not too bad. Ch chance for double armor effect when hit. Now prefix and end elder influence. Right. Rings, fire, cold, lightning, chaos age can now be exclusively found from the special element delve encounter. Okay. Weapons, socketed attack spells deal X% percent more damage now found from shaper influence. Chance for poison and bleeding inflicted to deal more damage. Chance to intimidate... Wow, we lost so many. So I can't make delirium or despair on hit ones anymore. I have to find that on a ring then. And that's really rare to find on a ring. I mean, you still try to make like ones with the barons, obviously, but this patch good, really good. I mean, okay, the patch itself is a bit Weird, but like, yeah, I think I think Delirium is going to be an amazing League poke. All right, you can see it. No leveling gloves anymore. This is a terrible patch and I'm quitting the game. Oh my God, dude. I completely forgot that our leveling gloves are gone. Oh no. Oh no. Fun detected. Oh no. Oh, that's terrible. That's actually terrible. And leveling rings too? I mean, I, that's just for attack. And the, the, the higher ones are crafted anyway. You can still do those. What is leveling gloves? So before, what we would do, we, we would use a metallic and a frigid fossil on gloves, or metallic and scorched, and that would give you like 80 flat added to spells, and attacks, and heralds. Now... You could never do this at the start of a league, right? Because you needed the fossils. So it was never really a big deal for like day one to three. However, it was a really, really nice way for leveling um, new characters. Yeah, Loho. But yeah. Then, and the problem is like, I don't know. A lot of people want to speed up the leveling process anyway, because a lot of people don't enjoy leveling their 6th or 7th or 22nd character. 
Unique item balance. Unique watchstones always drop with a number of uses that is a multiple of three. Well, that's nice. I hated that they had different ones. The Savior, Mirage Warriors, created by this weapon, can now consume charges to bypass cooldowns. Wow. If the skill they use has a cooldown, they can be bypassed. For example, Flicker Strike Mirage Warrior will now consume Frenzy Charges. The Mirage Warriors will now have a cool new effect. Wow. Singularity. The aura granted by this item now has a radius of 35 units. This affects all versions of the item. Huh. Surfy's Heart. Now grants Soul Leader for 20 seconds upon using a Lost Shield from 10 seconds. Whoa. Surfy's Heart was already so cool. That's massive. It's it's just sad that it's on an amulet, so we can't use um thingy. Solstice Vigil. Soft, no. Solstice Vigil. What's in that class? Lemsip. Um Solstice Vigil. Now it's 30 to 40% increased damage from 20 to 25. 8 to 10 mana regen. Oh, the Shaper's Presence buff now grants minus 20% buff to Exploration Speed from 33%. This buff change affects all versions of the items. However, existing items will need to have a Diviner to receive the rest of the changes. Ha! <laughs> I like how I call it a buff change so that it's some players will be like, oh, it's a buff. It's not. Well, Essence Strain's great, this patch from everything I've seen so far. I mean, I, I think that's a good change. I mean, I'd rather they did it in other places than actual Solstice Vigil, because I thought Solstice Vigil was still fine. Tempered Flesh Spirit of Mine and Transcendent Flesh Spirit of Mine have been completely reworked. Existing items are not affected, and only new versions of these items will have the following changes. Tempered Flesh now grants minus one strength um, per allocated passive, and 2% life recovery rate per 10 strength. What? My boy! Tempered Spirit now runs minus 1 dex per dex on allocated and 2% movement speed per 10 dex. Okay, so the movement speed one is still fine. Um, tempered Mine, I guess it was too good to be that cheap. Tempered Mine now runs minus 1 and 2% mana recovery rate. And the upgraded one is still minus 1 with 3% life recovery rate, 2% reduced life recovery rate. Oh, un unallocated. And 7% critical strike multiplier per 10 strength on unallocated passives. Uh, 125 accuracy. The reduced movement speed. Uh, and 3% damage over time multiplier per 10 int on unallocated passives. Wow, that's going to be so strong for ED. Wow, Transcendent Mine is awesome. That's so strong. Wow. Oh, wow, that's really good. Yeah, that is really good. Um, it's a great change. Another nerf to Mana Guardians too. You can still get to spare on hit with a hunter wand. True. But it was very, very... The, okay, so the, the reason why the burn thing like is going to affect me, what I would normally do for Essence Drain early league, I would still do this, it's just not as strong, is I would buy an item level 2 wand, and what I would be looking for would be a plus 1 to all chaos damage spells, and despair on hit, and an open prefix. Anyway... Grand Spectrum. Cobalt versions now do 25% crit chance uh, per Grand Spectrum instead of 30 to max mana. 
Pepelaf. Viridian versions now grant 15% early damage from 12, and Crimson gives 7% all rest from 200 armor. Okay. Feathered Mine now increased the mana cost by 50% from 100 and grants 30 to 40% spell damage. Damn, I was hoping Feathered Mine would be unchanged. Like, I mean, it got nerfed, or I mean, buffed on spell damage, but I was hoping the mana cost would be just as high. This would affect existing items, except since they're all corrupted, you can't re-roll them. Nice. Mm, on a budget, it was really, really good to do early league moguls. I really want to do an Indigon build. I almost did one last thing. I mean, I'll definitely do one now, I think, with our Arch Archmage. Uh, Fate of the Vile now is 180 to 210 physical damage from 160 to 180. Wow. The substantial buff. Shadow Stitch now has 250 to 350 increased defenses. Existing items are unaffected. Sorry. Okay. Aunt's Heritage now grants plus two max early res while you have no endurance charges from 3%. You can use the Divine Orb on existing items to increase the odds of you dying while wearing it. Well, that is a big nerf to every build I run in SSF at least, sir. Well, that's unfortunate. I mean, it's still really good. It just... It makes Saffles better. Sort of. It's still really good. It's still very worth what using. Because it's got life on it, and it's got so high armor, so it's really good with Val Mountain Shell, and it seems easier to get max res in other spots anyway. Um, Let's see. Shaper's Touch now grants plus one... Plus one max mana per four strength from two, and one percent energy shield per ten strength from two. You can use the uh, divine or bonus system versions if you feel it's unethical to have that much mana and energy shield because it is. Thank you, GGG. Our prayers have been answered. Now that. Now that is a slam dunk on Mana Guardians. Now they can maybe only get 22,000 energy shield instead of 30k. Nice. Shaper is tickle. <laughs> Crown of Ice now causes increases and reductions to spell damage. Uh, to attack to uh, apply to attacks at 150% of their value. Oh, that's pretty cool. See you later, me. But you won't sell Shaper's Touch anymore for 200c. They're useless. I'm not useless. Still best is left for Mana Guardian. They're not as bad as the boots. Come on, dudes. The boots are pretty bad. I used to love the boots back in like EK days. Um, Chains of Command. <sighs> okay, I just need to pray real quick. Please. It's like my favorite item right now. Please. I have not butchered my boy. Please don't have butchered my boy. Chris Wilson. Please. <sighs> Chains of Command. The skills granted by this item have been updated in line with anime weapon. The level 18 version of the skill adds 108 to 159. The level of the skill can animate up to 13 minions. The level 20 version of the skill adds 126. Um, and this can animate up to 14 minions. Both have base duration of 20 seconds. The changes, of, these changes affect all the version of the item. <sighs> there was nothing further. We're good. We're good. We're fine. It's fine. My boy! We can play Chains of Command. 20 seconds though. That's fine. It always had less. It was always less than self-casting it. Yorhast, Black Steel. The on-kill skill this weapon has been updated uh, in line with anime weapon. Also, no, also affects all versions. Yeah. The Baron now grants 10 to 20% max minion life from 20, 1% max number of zombies per 5 in strength from 300, 
with at least 1,000 strength. Wow. 1.5 to 2% damage dealt by your race zombies. This leads to you and... Wow. I feel like Baron has gone from like 5C to 8X. Now we're back to 5C. I mean, you can do strength stacking builds, just not so much for zombies. Death's Harp now grants 50% crit multi from 100, and you can use the Divine Herb to ruin it in any existing death hopes. To ruin it. Like, I don't know why, but I just really... I just really enjoy the patch notes and how, like, candid they are. Like, you can use the Divine Herb to ruin it. I just, I love it. You know? Yeah, they're so sassy. Oh, Bex definitely wrote these. It's Bex or Chris. Uh, obliteration now is 25 to 50 and 85 to 105 added first. From 24 to 30 to 80 to 92. Wow. That's huge for Spellslinger. Thread of Hope. Clarify the description to the area which you can allocate passives. Uh, Eclipse Solaris no longer has the added physical damage. Uh, it has 30 to 45, the 60 to 80 added fire, and 6 to 10 increased attack speed. It does not ex exist to uh, existing versions or the faded Corona Solaris. I mean, obliteration is probably going to be... I don't think they'll be expensive, this thing. I don't know yet, but they're so common, right? Like, I must have dropped 30 obliterations this thing. Yeah, it would need a rarity nerf to be expensive. It's going to be very good, though. Okay, cool. Doriani's Fist. Now it's 30% shock effect. Nice. 80 to 100 maximum energy shield. Wow. And 30% chance to shock. 200 to 250 energy shield and killing a shocked enemy. The Doriani skill effect granted is 30% less attack speed from 50% less and 40% chance of shock from 20. We can fist people now and it's actually not a joke. Wow. I've wanted to for such a long time, but that's kind of badass. Like there's an actual good reason to use it now. That's nice. I like that. That's so cool. I, I I think that's one of the coolest things about Path of Exile, like the items that add skills. Uh, Mind of the Council no longer recovers mana on shocking an enemy and now causes attack skills to have added lightning damage and quills. Yes, I realized what I said. Equals to 6% of your maximum mana. And now it causes you to lose 3%. When you use an attack skill, 15 to 20 max energy shield. Huh, okay. F equals. Yeah. Um, Soul Catcher no longer grants reduced cost of well skills. It now grants 80 to 100% crit chance with well skills. And it now increases damage with well skills by 80 to 120. That. <laughs> Why? That was one of the more fun mechanics in the game. Soul Ripper has been reworked and it has minus 40 to plus 90 max charges and consumes maximum charges on use, granting Vile Souls equal to the consumed charges. It now loses all charges on entering a new area. Do they just really hate fun? Or are they just like hellbent on us having different fun? It's like they were like, no, this is bad fun. You guys need to have good fun. Why? Because the new jewels apparently let you have 100% uptime on Vile Immortal Call? Oh. Oh. But that's the standard thing. Vile Immortal Call is not in the game. It's on standard. The amount of things you can do to be immortal on Val on, sta on Val standard, Val standard, 
uh, on standard is like infinite. I don't I don't care about standard balance. Like you have you have legacy flasks. You have Vinktar. You can just slap on a Vinktar. It's a very simple setup with new duels to reduce while it close to zero. Huh, okay. Alright, alright, alright. Other item changes. The divination card, the Dark Mage, no longer gives var staves as a reward. The divina oh that makes sense. And that's nice. The divination card, the price of protection can once again drop. It now always grants a total map of tier equal to whatever tier it would be if all washstones are socketed in its region in the current league. Okay. I feel like the guy who made that is probably a bit salty. For those of you who don't know, every divination card in Path of Exile is paid for and made by a player. I mean, obviously a GDD staff member could uh, put out a thousand dollars and make one themselves, but they're all all made and designed by players. If I designed that card, I'd be pretty annoyed. Monster changes. Monster movement speed now has a lower limit, beyond which they cannot be slowed further. For magic monsters, that limit is 10% of their base movement speed. For rare and unique monsters, that limit is 20% of their base movement speed. Monster skills that appear to deal damage in waves, such as the Bat Monster Screech in Highgate Mines, now actually do. Previously, the damage was dealt instantly across the whole area. Oh. Huh. Cool. Who made the Doctor? It says in the wiki on most of them. The rest of Spinning Blades will now play a short animation before they begin dealing damage. Oh, well, that's nice. These are great changes. Especially for new players. I feel like this was really rough for new players. Delve changes. Delve areas are now considered to be the level of the monsters in the shallowest part of the delve, meaning players will not be downscaled below the level of the shallowest part of the delve. It also means that item filters, which filter by area level, will now work correctly in the Azurite mine. Poor Lily. You can no longer enter delve areas if you're level... If you're 20 levels or more below the shallowest part of the delve you're trying to access, and you can no longer join a delve encounter that is already in progress. The rate and volume of monsters that will spawn while you're in a city area has been increased. Really? Wait, really? Am I the only one that's surprised by this? I feel like there was like a shit ton of monsters there to begin with. Are we just going to be like, ah? I guess they're trying to give it a reason to go there. Yeah, maybe this is like, we're, maybe we're going to be like leveling in cities. That's crazy. Fire hose? Yeah. I mean, that could be pretty rough for like builds like ED actually. Like if it's just, if there's just monsters anywhere and like they keep spawning in front of you and not affected by contagion and you try to hit the one in front. I don't know. I see me. It's here. And thank you. Um, all right. Incursion, inc incursion changes. If you are very lucky, you can now find double corrupted strings of servitude from incursion temples of level 80 or greater. Many rooms now provide temple wide bonuses for the present day Temple of Atsuoto based on their tier. The following rooms now grant plus one pack size, 2% quantity, and 4% rarity. Trap Workshop, Armor Workshop, Sparring Room, Shrine of Empowerment, Pools of Restoration, Hatchery, Flame Workshop, and Lightning Workshop. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and like, really, really good reason to do level 80 temples plus two. Imagine if you get a Quant and Crit multi-belt. Test in the present day incursion that previously contained an incursion unique or magic item will now also run two to three rare item with the architect mods. The poison gardens high tier is now add more or larger poison pods, including some that contain monsters at tier three. Tempest from the Tempest Generator in its higher tier is now now strike much more frequently and their effects last longer. Yo, this is like amazing! Um, based on the tier of the Surveyor Study sequence of rooms, architects throughout the present day temple will now drop more map-related currency items. 
Yo, whoever was in charge of this, I like, I, I, I would love to meet them. I probably met them, but like, oh my god. The royal meeting room and higher tiers now add more magic monsters to the temple. If you manage to find a Ziri in there, her base life will now more closely watch, closely match that of her Val fragment equivalent. Oh, right. Okay, cool. So the 83 ones aren't going to be like, Ugh! and bad rewards. I think they probably should have done that you can meet an Uber at Ziri one at 83. Yeah, tier 3 normal at Ziri was pretty fucking scary for no reward. Um, based on the tier of the armor workshop sequence of rooms, monsters throughout the present day temple will benefit from increased LE res and will take reduced fist damage in line with similar map modifiers. Nice. And lots of benefits too. Based on the tier of the sparring room, monsters throughout the present day will benefit from increased crit chance and crit multi. The guard house and its higher tiers now increase the pack size. The splinter research lab now contains a breach. Higher tiers added uh, room. Higher tier versions of the room add additional breaches and clasped hand chests. The jeweler workshop and its higher tiers now also grant increased item rarity. Shrine of Empowerment now grants monsters in present day temple attack speed and cast speed. Sanctum of Unity now grants plus one to the level of monsters throughout the present day temple. Ah! And Temple Nexus tier three now grants plus one to the level of both monsters and items throughout the present day temple. Yo, that's huge. That's massive, especially for finding high item level stuff early on. Based on the tier of the hatchery, monsters through the present day temple will benefit from increased damage modifiers in line with similar amount modifiers, including benefits to item rarity. Nice. More damage, Pog. We die more. Based on the tier of the hatchery sequence, monsters through the present day temple will benefit from modifiers, which grants extra fire damage. Extra lightning. Based on the torment cells, monsters through present day temple will now start possessed, beginning at... No. They didn't. Monsters on the tier of torment cells. Series of room. Monsters throughout the present day temple will now start possessed. Well, that's too strong. Do you think it's going to be all of them? It's not going to be all of them, right? I mean... I'm, I'm having Dark Shrine flashbacks. Is anyone else having Dark Shrine flashbacks? A little shadow. Hmm. Hmm. Eight spirit tor well, okay, so like martyr especially if like if martyr is like yeah, martyr could be very rippy. I'm very excited. I mean, depending on how strong it is. Torment Cells is probably going to be the best thing to put in. Um, but yeah, it depends. A wider range of strong boxes can now be found in the strong box chambers than its higher tiers. Incursion Temple crafting benches can now be used by characters on the same account other than the one that opened it. Wow, this is like some awesome changes. The only thing, the only thing that I'm like still missing, like obviously these are all amazing changes and Incursion sounds awesome now. I feel like since the entire incursion has like such an Aztec theme and you see like, you know, the, the blood, um, blood pits or blood aqueducts, sort of like, you know, like the blood, you could see that it looks like it should flow. I feel like the only thing that I really wish, um, was there was that every time you killed an architect, the boss would flow through the boss to the boss and that the boss would be stronger or different. And I wish the boss wasn't a Roomba. 
Like I when I when I saw the temple and I was on my way to the boss, I was like, ooh, killing architects is gonna like change the boss and stuff. But like I feel like they could do more with that. Like the I, I I'm not that I'm still not excited by a vacuum cleaner boss. Betrayal changes. Ashleen can now award Metamorph Scarabs if she has the intervention job. <laughs> job of Megalol. She will now award double veiled weapons and jewelry if she's in transportation, double veiled armor and jewelry if she's in fortification. The mastermind can now drop a Metamorph Scarabs. Map changes. We made several large adjustments to map boss life. The copies uh, of Aziri created during a Luring Abyss Aziri fight is now. Approximately five times more life than before. Wow. I mean, I feel like part of the problem right now with Aziri is that her loot isn't really that exciting. Like, sure, Vertex is pretty good for, like, ED, but I, I don't care enough that I would actually want to kill Uber Ziri. The disfavor is Pepe Laugh. The gloves are good, but we have so many other better gloves that are generally better, and the gloves are very niche. They're not something that is, like, super meta on most builds. Like, it just doesn't feel worth doing. The bosses of Careblade, Porjoys, Actons, Maelstrom, Mekon, Olmex, Wakawa, Ryoru, Tuaha, The Winter Square, Prandis Manor, Futured Cloister, Twilight Temple, Dorianus Machinarium, Hallow Ground, and Pillars of Ruin have had their life significantly increased. Wow. The unshaped monsters at the end of Shaper's Gauntlet have also had their life increased. Maps offered as a Zana, as part of a Zana mission will now inherit the awakening level of the map Zana Stanian. Nice. Maps offered as a part of Zana's mission will now inherit the awakening. Wait, I already just read that line. Something is wrong with me. It's lack of sleep. I had a power nap just before this to wake up to read push notes. Um, Sana's level is now based on the number of bonus objectives you have completed rather than just the number of maps you completed. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That's sort of bad, but makes more sense. The Brutus, Merveil, and Weaver map boss equivalents have received the same upgrades as their campaign versions did in 3.9. Burial Chambers have moved to Tier 7 specifically so there isn't one lonely little Tier 7 map. Ah. Doctor farmers are crying. You can still farm it as the only map, so it doesn't matter. Um, the monsters avoid ailments. Map modifiers now grant thirty to fifty to seventy chance to avoid ailments from thirty to sixty to ninety. So, this change was specifically done so with awakening level eight, you won't have like immunity to elemental ailments. But it's sort of a weird thing to be crying about because if I was an ignite build, I would roll over this mod anyway, right? Like, 90% avoid ailment. Your Ignite build still feels like garbage in that map. So I would roll over it anyway, regardless. It was such a weird thing to see people that outraged about. Like, even if that mod was just immune at, at the last one, I would always roll over it. Like, or if it was 50%, it, like, just feels terrible. People just want to alk and go, I know, I know. The monsters, and, and it's like, it's so weird because you don't see people crying like that about Reflect. Like, Reflect's the same thing. Some builds just have to roll over it. What if you got a corrupted map that you want to run? Well, that's a downside of your build. That's completely acceptable. That's one of the positive things about being, about some builds that, um... <laughs> like, that's one of the positive things of some builds is that you can roll every map mod. That's that's a downside to corrupting the map. You can't run every map mod? Well, maybe you should be not corrupting every map then. 
Well, maybe we hate ourselves. Ever think of that? I relate to that. I relate to that. Um, and then avoid poison, bleed, blind, or sorry, poison, blind, and bleeding is now 20, 30, or 50. Shaper now takes significantly reduced damage at the start of each phase, which tapers off after 8 seconds. We're still going to see people just like... Brrrap. The death and taxes boss visuals have now been improved. Now has more life, uses new skills, moves more quickly, and will transition phases more rapidly. It will no longer target... It will no longer target non-player characters such as minions during phase transitions. Fewer extra monsters spawn during the fight and the boss now always drops map-related currency on death. We have more expensive, extensive changes planned for this map. So I'm calling it now. We're gonna see like Pee Dan 79 has been slain, rank 1 on the ladder. And I'm gonna go like, what killed him? I'm gonna open up the clip and like the death and taxes boss is just gonna run over to Dan and just go like, BRAP! We're gonna be like, oh fuck doing that. Fuck doing death and taxes, dude. I'm staying out of that map. Oh, I'm I'm seeing it, dude. I see it in my head. And uh I've called something like this one time before. I called this with um there was a change to the Val Siders where they removed the cooldown of um lightning thorns. And I remember saying that I feel like this is going to make that little spider just like insta people. And we had that happen with Angry Weasel ran up to the lightning spider with blade vortex on. This was back before blade vortex had individual blades and it just had like insane the attack speed. So he just ran up and vaporized. You just saw like a, a firework explode from the spider and he just insta died. It's like brrrap. It was great. It got changed within like six hours, but it was hilarious. Improved character visibility in Drox, the Warlord's Arena. Nice. Maritani, the Redeemer, will now move out of the storm more reliably. Nice. Baran, the Crusader's Manorins, won't stick around after he's slain anymore. Nice. The bosses of Val Pyramid will now spawn much more quickly. Clarify that monsters deal more damage as fire, cold, lightning is based on their physical damage. Entrances and NPC locations are no longer have ground effects around them. Nice. Zana League mods available during 3.10. I think I've seen this on Twitter already. Fortune favors the bull brave is three chaos orbs. Isn't that usually two? Or am I high? Ambush, two. Abyss, two. Abyss, two? That seems really cheap for Abyss. Right? Isn't Abyss normally five? That's so good for like, that's gonna be really nice currency on Hardcore Trade League early on. People that get to 83 and 86 maps are gonna be able to sell like Abyss tools very fast early on and farm liches. It was two before, yeah, okay, cool. Bloodlines, 3C. Uh, Domination, 3C. Perandus, 4C. Honestly, for like, for 4C, I would want like 50% chance for Kadiro. If not, I'm just gonna use Scarabs. Um, Beyond, 5C. And Blight, 8C. This is really good. And no Nemesis, that's awesome. Blight seems a bit cheap, actually. Blight is like, just a stupidly profitable mechanic now. I can see people I can see people are rushing this in trade league and just spamming blight. Like I know to a lot of players that's gonna seem like a lot of currency, but yeah. And sadly no Legion. I'm very, very sad about that. Yeah, domination is a bit weird, champ at three. Hmm. Pretty cool though. Use your interface improvements. When you attempt to send a message to a player that's not online, the auto response will now specify which player it is referring to. You can search for watchstones with sextants in the search bar. Nice. You can now see all of the current Zana map device options immediately upon 
unlocking the map device, as well as what is required to unlock each of Zana's map device options by hovering over them. Awesome. These are all really good. You are now warned the first time you attempt to use a map after an atlas reset, so you are aware that the state of your atlas has changed. Standardize the behavior of instant skills to the left mouse button or any behavior that is held thusly. All non val guard seals, blood rage, detonate mines, conviction, sorry, convocation, face run, vortex, summon dodri's effigy, focus, brand recall, and withering sub will repeat as long as you hold the button down. Berserk and frostbling and death mark will repeat as long as you hold the button down while you also have attack in place set. And throw flare and throw dynamite will only be used once if you hold the button down. All auras and other reservation skills, RF, Val RF, and Plague Bearer, Val Molten Shell will only be used once, but also require that you have attacking place to get set. Nice. That's awesome. How good is ED for blighted maps? Pretty good. Pretty good. I liked it. I actually, like, I found the anime weapon, while it was amazing at Blights, I felt like in 14 pluses, it would be a little bit more of a struggle. Quest rewards, Kinetic Bolt, or King Cloak, Blade Blast, and Second Wind. These, yeah, I, I, I don't care. Um, PvP changes. PvP Omega LOL! Um, skill effects affected by Astral Projector range now deal 30% less damage against players. Skills supported by Archmage deal 20% less damage. Spider minions created deal 85% less damage. The attack time override uh, for Soul Run is now 0.6 seconds. And Spell Stringer and Skills trigger 50% less. Okay, cool. Are there any interesting bug fixes? Oh my god, there's a lot. Okay, let's just read through them anyway. Fixed issues with environmental shadows not displaying correctly. Fixed a bug where Piety's boss path and Shaper's one will cause visual problems with terrain tiles. Um, so wait, was there no bug that made like Piety too strong in Act 4? Because I saw that Quinn died to it and I thought maybe it was a bug. Because she looked so strong when Quinn was fighting her. Fixed a bug which caused Totem Cosmetics effects to fire more slowly initially than the base shrapnel ballista model. Fixed a bug where while fighting an Elder Guardian, Lightning Warp supported by Greater Spell Echo would cause the player to become trapped in an inescapable arena. Nice. Fixed a bug where you could select pets that were following you while editing your hideout. Fixed a bug where which caused the unique tool Volifier to incorrectly grant Barrage additional projectiles on every arrow fired. When supported by Arrow No Support Gem. Oh, F? That was a fun build too. Fixed a bug which caused skills with damaging effects that were disconnected from the initial skill, such as Molten Strike. Um, such as Molten Strike, Firestorm, Wild Strike, and a number of others, um, which were supported by effects that triggered multiple successive uses of the skill. Multi Strike, Creator Spell, Echo, and Unleash. To not apply the Support Gem's damage penalty, or enhancement to those delayed effects or even to the successive skill uses. This resulted in less damage being dealt by several skills when supported by multi-strike than they were intended to deal and more damage by skills supported by greater spell echo and unleash. Oh. Fix the bug which caused Vile Flame Blast to always deal critical strikes. Still wasn't seeing much use though. Fix the bug which gets which he, where you could socket watchstones into a conqueror citadel even though the conqueror was already occupying it. Um, fix the bug where a microtransaction store would not change the size if you change screen resolution setting. Oh no. Um, fix the bug where party members tectonic slam would never appear to be empowered on your client even if they had consumed an endurance charge. Huh. Um, fix the bug where a flask of the same base type would override each other's duration display bar. But it wasn't just the display bar, it would like straight up remove some, like with Freezy BMT and instance. 
Um, fix the bug where Vagan Scarab didn't have additional Scarab roll chest. Other. Wait. Fix the Vagan Scarab didn't have an additional Scarab roll chest that all the other Betrayal Scarab rewards had. Oh, that's awesome. Wow. The bottom of your Coke can? What's wrong with it? Um. Fix the bug where Haku would say the wrong lines at the right times. The wrong lines at the right times. Fix the bug which caused NPCs to not talk about Zana. Rude. Yes. Also fix that dialogue option. Fix the bug which caused the Hungry Loop Unique Ring which com consumed and empowered to provide too many additional levels. Oh. Fix a bug where the Elder and Shaper added Cold Fire and Lightning damage to spells were unaffected by Catalyst quality. Hmm. Okay. Cool. Nice. Fix a bug where Synthesis items could gain an implicit, um, which increased the effect of socketed jewels when there was no way to socket any jewels in the item. Really weird bugs. <laughs> Fix the bug where Swift Affliction can stack with its Awakened counterpart. Wow. Fix the bug where the Redeemer Influence modifier, which caused nearby enemies to be blinded, would be disabled if you took the second side keystone. Fix the bug where certain monsters return invisible when raised to specters. Fix the bug where characters using phasing would render behind track tiles uh, in areas with tracks, such as the pier map. Oh, render behind the track tiles. That makes sense. Uh, fix the numerous cosmetic issues with effects clipping badly. Fix many small seams and gaps in terrain throughout the game. Fix a flickering shadow in the battle scarred hideout. Fix a bug which caused the shot effect for arrow skills to be used by duelists to appear on the wrong hand. Fix a bug which caused the cliff and the ledge to appear as one QA member put it baby smooth. Nice. Fixed several bad interactions between Illusionist body armor and Wings cosmetic. Fixed a bug which caused passages that were meant to collapse in the Abyss not to. But also they did. But also they didn't. But they do now. Okay. Uh, Baron, the Crusader's mana runes now match the terrain rather than sticking halfway through the terrain lots of the time. Fixed. A bug where the Eye of Malice and the Duelist and Templar were more like floating bobs of malice. Fixed some typos in the Prophecy Quest Tracker. Bex definitely wrote these? Yeah. Fixed several modifiers that weren't correctly improving the Turbulent Catalyst quality. Fixed a bug which prevented the Awakened Blasphemy support from having any cosmetic microtransaction applied to it. Fix the bug where map bosses slain by Elder Guardians weren't dropping. Wouldn't drop Metamorphorians. They still won't, but that's just because the Elder Guardians will instead. Fix a bug where Salasang dropped Metamorphorians twice. How was it supposed to survive after losing an Orion? Thermatory. Fix some bad interactions between the Basilisk weapon effect and other weapon cosmetic. <clears throat> Fix a bug which caused the impact sound from one barrage to play at the wrong location. Well, that must be weird. Fix a bug where Einar forgot to put Thrathon powder in a secondary bomb so they weren't exploding like they normally do. What a silly Einar. Fix the number of skips and explosions in the labyrinth. Holy shit, there's so many bugs, dude. Fix a bug which caused cosmetic shield... Shield cosmetic microtransaction to linger if you use shield charge. Wait, I thought that was intended. That looked cool sometimes. Fix the bug where Kira could get stuck in the way on his way into the Valkyrie Vault. Um, remove the trail that was added to the Legion weapon effect after it was released. Sorry, F. Fix the bad interaction between Void Emperor and Arcane weapons. Fix some boulders in the Ascent corrupted area that you could walk through. Restored Clockwork Firewall and Microtransaction to its former brighter glory. Fix the bug where Drox could keep his damage. Reduction effects longer than he should have. Good. Fix the bug that Al has means burrowing vipers will get confused when there were multiple players. The snakes. Those snakes are only used to being around Al has mean. 
Awesome. Uh, fix the bug where the unholy trio could become invisible if you left and rejoined the are arena at just the right or wrong time. <clears throat> fix the bug where shadows in the celestial nebula would abruptly get cut off. Fix the bug where, where Tani, the redeemer, could in in invisibly use the skill if you hit her just before her dash. Um, display a shear for AMD GPUs. Anyway, Coke. <sighs> Fix the bug where four textures and corrupted side areas were missing. Wipers would linger after Al has been defeat. Prevented you from firing a void shot from Void Fletcher if the triggering skill was supported by Arrow Nova. Fix possible desync during the serious fight. Hmm. I swear I say fix the bug one more fucking time. Fix the bug where skittabots were not being disabled by Tain's command. No! F? This is a nerf. Fix the bug? You mean nerf? Change the command. Some Nova seals were not behaving correctly with Astral Projector. Wonder if Shockwave was affected by that. Where monsters would not use their cyclone skill unless you were a very specific distance away. You could buy individual resonators from Nico when you should have been able to buy a stack. Oh, right. Uh, weapons with focus summoned by Chains Command would cause the client to crash. Hi! <laughs> Hi! That's me. Um, arrow skills, when fired upwards, would leave the arrow model behind. It's just with minion targeting that were supported by death mark. If you used the skill when the cursor was over Cassia and you were moving at the same time, you would talk to her. Ew, talking. Uh, Rally Cushing Counter were abandoned, would continuously fire arrows into the sky that never went away. Where did they go? Mirage Warriors created by the server would not attack your target if you were using a tunneled ability such as Cyclone. Fix the bug, where critical hits from triggering skills such as Labyrinth Glove and Chance could trigger the savior effects, creating Mirage Weapon Mirage Warriors that did nothing. Now they are not created from skills they cannot use. Blast Rain's tooltip uh, wouldn't update with additional arrows. Uh, effects that would change the appearance of Frenzy Power and Endurance Charges would not work correctly if you had a source of minimum charges. Ray's Spectre Tooltip from Arakali's Fang stated the spider's level was based on the level of the corpse they were raised from, when that was no longer the case. Sextants that guarantee the presence of a certain shrine would spawn a random shrine and then replace it by a guaranteed shrine, but the effects of the initial shrine would remain. Um, okay. Uh, Ceres could leave his arena and wouldn't return. <laughs> he will now return. <laughs> uh, could allow players to attack Metamar from a safe distance without being targeted. Oh, okay. Uh, a very rare bug with Metamor could spawn a unique boss as one of its extra monsters. Really? Blighted Ramparts maps could have blighted loot drop in inaccessible locations. <laughs> gifts of the Red Queen and Gifts of the Sacrifice, of strong, sacrifice strong Box could get stuck in inaccessible locations. Uh, lots of crashes with our Nova support. Uh, the port map where it wouldn't drop a metamorph organ if all of the organs of the same type throughout the map had already been connected. I guess he thought you just didn't want his. Fix the bug where five of all Orions used to be summoned a metamorph where from unique monsters, the metamorph wouldn't spawn any extra monsters. Really taking the unique thing too seriously. Cancelling a bow attack before an animation was fired would result in the arrow firing sound playing. Fix the bug where blighted maps would consume sextants uses despite never granting the sextant effects. Fury Val would appear to do nothing on a party member's client. Einar would lose his nerve just before the malformation bus room, causing you to go in alone. Einar is very brave. Elemental hit wouldn't deal more damage to affected enemies with the alternative element Brittle, Scorched, and Sap. Wow, that's gonna be huge then. 
to, that they made sure that it's working. Transcendent tool hovers would now not update as the passives were allocated. If you leveled up while in the middle of a delve, Nico could dig a tunnel in a way that would result in some very bad interactions. Oh! Rare monsters could fracture, and those fractured monsters could have metamorph organs. Um, you could get stuck inside of one of Sirius' walls. Oh, nice. Fix some desync issues that could be caused by throwing a smoke mine while moving and then detonating. Fix a bug where the buff granted by punishment wasn't correctly affected by modifiers to scale effect duration. The great white beast in beats, beast of the Pits wasn't being stunned from its charge if the uh, distance was too short. Yeah, Jello is really good. I <clears throat> I don't use smoke mine mostly because um, it fucks up my hands, and it's definitely better. But it's it's so hand intensive, and I want to be able to use my hands five years from now. Not even joking. Like that's the only reason I don't use smoke mine. It's objectively better. Um, fix the bug where explosive arrow could linger on monsters after that exploded if you're seeing predictive or n uh, predictive networking mode. Interesting. <clears throat> fix the bug where skills supported by Aranova would still pick targets based on the player location and would cause projectiles to appear to travel further than they actually were. Huh. Volley supported the second air projectile of tornado shot when it shouldn't have. Enemies created... Enemy characters with EB will no longer have their EB displayed in their health bars, since it wasn't really relevant and can be quite misleading. Um, Ballista totems to magically float. Flying isn't planned until Path of XL6. Path, Path of XL6 confirmed. Um, fix the bug which broke the capacity for the Grand Masters and Hologram Masters to Cyclone. Um, you couldn't see Navali's Act 5 introduction if you defeated Sirius, preventing you from being able to complete all areas of achievement in temporary league. And scout ranged ring tower anointments didn't actually have an effect. Fixed a rare crash caused by insanity. Removed user shifty and MMs. It will not return in a future patch. Get well soon. Recently added anime weapon as a physical tag and now animates a weapon. Oh yeah, and you don't. Uh, we've already read that. Wow, those were some pretty interesting patch notes. A lot of stuff I didn't expect. Shadow stitch. Yeah, shadow stitch is good. Oh. Appendix to remove user shifty and immense. Oh, that's that's cute. Some guy got his appendix removed. I didn't even realize. Yeah, we read the recent edits. Oh, unless there's new ones. Um, kinetic blast now deals base damage. Hundred and forty to from hundred and twenty. Ooh. Oh, 7% buff later. Cool. Okay, awesome. Um, so we'll we'll end the, the YouTube video here, basically, of me going over the patch notes. Again, thank you for all the subs and stuff during this. I was just trying to, yeah, not read it uh, out. And uh, yeah, this is this is pretty cool. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed me reading the patch notes. I will be like doing like a TLDR too after this and talk about a little bit more about my feelings so that'll be in a separate video and uh yeah thanks try to die less than i do